This example is the same as the previous example. However, this time there is no price discrimination. We're going to maximize profit without price discrimination. Now, when we don't have price discrimination, this implies that P1 for our domestic market and P2 for our international market, these two prices are the same. In other words, P1 is equal to P2, and we can give it a more general notation of just P. So this consideration is what really separates this example from our last example. In the last example, we had independent markets where our pricing for both the domestic and the international market were done separately, so they were independent. In this example, the pricing of the two markets is going to be done together. The pricing in each market is going to be the same and thus being done to com maximize the combined profits for both markets. So now we're going to try to come up with a profit equation. It's going to be a little bit complicated. If we're going to come up with a profit equation, we're going to need our total revenue minus our total cost. Well, we have a total cost function right here, and it's in terms of Q. So total cost is in terms of Q. But if I were to work with the revenue equation, where this is my price times the quantity, I would be looking at two different quantities. For market one, I would have quantity one. For market two, I would have quantity two. So now we've got three different variables that this problem's in, and that's not going to work. So we're going to do some manipulation and use this third equation here to bring all of our pricing and all of our revenue equations in terms of Q, our overall quantity produced. So that's our strategy as we're going to go forward. There are other strategies you could take, but you need to bring it down to some common variables and then do your optimization is the key. I'm choosing to do this with Q as the common variable I'm going to try to bring this equation to be in terms of. So let's start with clean slate here and let's recognize that we've got some general price P we have no price discrimination, so P1 and P2 can both be written as P instead. So now I'm going to treat this as equation, equation 1 and this as equation 2. And I'm going to manipulate both to isolate Q1 and Q2. So equation 1, P is equal to 90 minus 3Q1. And I'm going to manipulate this to bring Q1 in terms of P. So from here, I'm going to add 3Q to both sides and I'm going to subtract P, adding 3Q1 and subtracting P. And I'm going to get 3Q1 is equal to 90 minus P. Now I can isolate Q1 by dividing both sides by 3. 90 divided by 3 leaves me with 30. And then I have 1 third or P over 3. So now I have Q1 in terms of a variable P. And now I'm going to do the same thing with equation 2. So I had P is equal to 490 minus 7Q2. And this time I want to manipulate this so I have Q2 isolated. So I'm going to move Q 7Q2 over here, P over here. I have 7Q2 is equal to 490 minus P. Dividing both sides by 7, I get Q2 is equal to 70 minus 1 7th P, or P over 7. So now I'm going to use a third equation. This equation right here, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. To combine these, this is going to be equation 3. Equation 3, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And I'm going to take this equation, let's call this equation 4, and equation 5, and sub them into equation 3. So I'm going to get for Q1, 30 minus 1 third P, plus Q2, 70 minus 1 seventh P. 
adding these up. I don't really need these brackets because it's just adding. I'm going to have 30 plus 70 like terms, 100, minus 1 third plus 1 seventh times p. Now let's do a little bit of fraction math over here. A common denominator would be 21. So 1 third would be equal to 7 over 21. And 1 seventh would be equal to 3 over 21. Adding those up, I get 10 over 21. So this becomes 100 minus 10 over 21 times p. So now I have a new expression, q in terms of p. Now I said I wanted to put everything in terms of q. That was my objective. I want to have q as my independent variable. So I'm going to manipulate this equation to isolate price. So I'm going to move 10 21sts p over here and q over here. What I get is 10 over 21 p is equal to 100 minus q. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse of this to get 1. or multiplying it essentially by 2.1. So I'm going to get p is equal to 2.1 times 100 minus q. This is going to give me 210 minus 2.1q. So now I have a singular price equation that accounts for both Q1 and Q2, both the international and domestic markets. So I can come up with a revenue equation, TR is equal to P times Q. So I have 210 minus 2.1Q times Q. And this is going to give me 210Q minus 2.1Q squared. And this is the revenue equation, my total revenue equation. I already had a total cost equation in terms of Q that was way up here, 250 plus 5Q. So now I'm in a good position to be able to come up with my profit equation. Profit is going to be equal to total revenue minus total cost. So I'm going to have 210Q minus 2.1q squared minus 250 plus 5q. Let's remember that we need to distribute this minus to everything in the brackets. So this is really 210q minus 2.1q squared minus 250 minus 5q. Collecting my like terms, I'm going to have negative 2.1q squared plus 205Q minus 250. So there is my profit equation. Whew, that was a lot just to get the profit equation. But that's not our main objective here. Our main objective is to maximize profit, to find out where we can, what price we need to set to maximize profit. So we're going to maximize this function now. So we're going to start our process of optimization now. So first step, I'm going to get the first derivative. So that first derivative is going to be negative 4.2q plus 205. Okay, so that's the first derivative of my profit equation. Next, I'm going to set this to be equal to 0. So setting this to be equal to 0, I can establish where that critical point is by solving for q. I'm going to move 4.2 to the other side of the equation. I have 205 is equal to 4.2q, dividing both sides by 4.2. I then get q is equal to 48.81. Step two is done. Now I'm going to calculate the profit at this coordinate, at q is equal to 48.81. So I'm going to use my original profit equation, or the profit equation I came up with through a lot of hard work, which is going to be equal to negative 2.1 times 48.81 squared plus 205 times 48.81 minus 250. And this gives me 
4,752.98. So there's profit that associated with Q is equal to 48.81. I have a critical point here. But I still need to know that it's the maximum coordinate. So I'm going to do the second derivative. So I need my second derivative of this profit equation, which is going to be the derivative of my first derivative equation up here. And that is going to be the derivative of negative 4.2q is negative 4.2. And the derivative of 205 is 0. So the second derivative is negative 4.2 for all values of q. So we don't really have to calculate this for 48.81 because it's the same for all values of q. So this is a negative second derivative, meaning that it is concave down that this critical point that we found is indeed a maximum. So we know that our profit that we calculated at this critical point, this profit of 4,752.98 is indeed the maximum profit. Now we still have one more thing to do up here. We can see that we're not just looking for the maximum profit, we're looking for the price that we should set. That's something we can control, what price we should set to achieve this maximum profit. So price um, is going to be based on the quantity. We have a quantity here and we have a price equation in terms of quantity that we established way back here, right here. So we're going to use this equation, p is equal to 210 minus 2.1q, to calculate that price. p is equal to 210 minus 2.1q. And we're going to substitute the quantity at which we get maximum profit into this pricing equation. 48.81 is our q value. And we get pricing to be 107 50. And there we have the price that we'll need to set to achieve maximum profit. So in this problem, um, the challenge I think is less about um, doing the optimization. That was a pretty straightforward process, but it was in finding our profit equation in um, a, both a domestic and international market scenario where we have different quantities being sold in our different markets. Beware, we will have more problems like that, both in your homework and in your exams.